This video covers the top five limitations of finite element analysis. So really the question is, what can go wrong when you run an FEA? Turns out there are actually quite a few things that can go wrong. So quick example here, we look at a baseball impact with the bat. And you might not realize it, but the baseball is actually pretty darn deformable. You can see in this figure of from a, a high-speed film how much deformation that you see with the baseball. But when you run this in FEA, you should get something similar, right? Not something that looks like this. So here's an example of what can go wrong when you're running FEA. One of the major limitations of FEA is that typically analysts use commercial codes. Commercial codes are very powerful, they have lots of different inputs you can put in, and therefore if you don't know exactly what you're doing, it's easy to make mistakes with those inputs. So here's a quick example of choosing the analysis type. It's actually a fairly straightforward thing to do, but you can see there are a lot of different options to choose from. This is one from Abacus CAE. A second major limitation of FEA is that in the analysis approach, you define a simplified displacement field inside of each element. So that what that means is that the accuracy of that displacement field depends on how big the element is. When you have very small elements, then the sum of all those small elements approximates a realistic solution. On the other hand, with larger elements, that doesn't work quite so well. Here's a quick example. If we take a problem, relatively simple problem, of a flat plate that is subjected to a uniform pressure in tension, it has a hole in the middle. And we want to look at what the stress is in that hole. So this is a stress concentration problem. That's a great one to simulate in FEA. So you can use symmetry, we'll talk more about that later, to actually analyze only a quarter of this problem. And that allows us to put more elements into smaller space. So here's what happens. Here are four different meshes using triangular elements where we focus in on, on the, uh, that corner where we see the high stresses. If we then plot the stress that's reported based on the number of degrees of freedom, remember number of degrees of freedom is the, uh, a degree of freedom is the ability for a node to move or translate. So the more degrees of freedom you have, basically it means you have more nodes. So as we increase the number of degrees of freedom, we see that the predicted stress at that location increases and gradually levels out. So the element size is influencing the prediction. Not really a good idea if you want a system that predicts accurate stresses regardless of the element size. A third major category of FEA limitations is with the element stiffness approximation. We calculate element stiffness in a straightforward manner, but as element shape changes, that calculation becomes less accurate. So if we look at a typical structure that has been meshed, we can see that in this case that we're trying to force a four-sided element mesh onto the structure with curves. That results in some elements that are oddly shaped. They are still four-sided, but they are certainly no longer squares those oddly shaped elements end up having larger errors in the prediction of stresses, displacements, and so on. A fourth category of what can go wrong in FEA is the number of calculations. There are numerical errors that build up in computations on finite precision computers. And let's look at how many calculations we have. If you have a thousand nodes in a model and each node has three degrees of freedom, this is actually a fairly small model size depending on your application. You end up with a stiffness matrix that's 3000 by 3000. That stiffness matrix has to be inverted and when you invert a matrix, an any n by n matrix, then you end up with on the order of n cubed and n squared multiplications. So what that means for our little 3000 by 3000 stiffness matrix is 27 billion multiplications have to happen in order to invert that matrix. Computers have finite precision. That means the errors that are produced, the very, very tiny errors, you're going to multiply things 27 billion times. Those errors are going to start to get bigger. This is one of the challenges of FEA. A final major limitation of FEA is that it allows you to see the limits of the theory. What I mean by that is,
when you have a constraint or a boundary condition in FEA, there is no deformation, none at all. Every physical structure experiences deformation at their constraints. So the theory says that, the, that we should be able to assume no deformation and we'll get a correct answer or nearly correct. But if you focus on that joint where you've prevented all deformation, you will see higher local stresses. FEA will allow you to look there. If you're doing hand calc, you wouldn't have been able to look in that area. Point loads. Point loads are kind of a fun one. What is the definition of stress? Stress is load divided by area. A point load has no area that it's applying a load to, therefore it has infinite stress by definition. Infinite FEA will predict, or at least it will attempt to predict, infinite stress right under a point load. It allows you to look in a place that the theory does not cover. So you have to know that you can't look under point loads and that you can't look right at constraints. Sharp internal corners have infinite stress concentrations. Same basic idea. In FEA, you can have two elements meeting at a point um, with no curvature between them. You will see potentially an infinite stress concentration. Now, in order to actually see infinite stress, you would have to refine the mesh with infinitely many elements. So you don't see infinite, but you do see large high stresses at corners. You as the analyst have to know if that's real or not. Another major aspect of this is that when you do a linear analysis, which is what a lot of FEA is done in, you have to assume small deformations. That can mean some funny things that we'll talk about later on when I discuss nonlinear analysis in a later video. So what can you do about these things? Here are the five limitations that I've identified. Uh, there are some things that we can do when, as an FE analyst in order to work around these limitations. One of the best things you can do is simply check your results. Have another way of verifying that your answer is reasonable. We'll spend a lot of time talking about that throughout the course. Another is to make sure that your element size is not having a significant impact on the results that you're seeing. That's something we call the convergence study and we'll talk more about that in the course. Check your element quality. Most um, Finite element codes have the option to check quality. Most people don't take advantage of that option. So look at the quality of the elements and improve it before you submit a job. Use your judgment. You're an engineer and you need to take advantage of all those other courses you've had. You've developed engineering judgment. Don't accept what you see in FEA at face value. Learn the theory behind it. That's part of this course is taking you through that theory so you really understand where these limitations come from.